Hello, everyone. Welcome to my talk. My name is Akira Takashi. I'm currently a PhD student at Ops University in Denmark. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about our recent work, two round N out of N and multi-signatures and trapdoor commitment from lattices. This talk is based on a joint work with Ivan Damgord, Claudio Randi from Ops University and Mehdi Tipsch from NTT. So let me briefly introduce the topic and the background. So as everybody probably knows, right now there's the ongoing NIST post-quantum crypto standardization process. In particular, last year they announced the finalists. So if you look at the lattice-based candidates, there are essentially uh, two different approaches in order to achieve uh, lattice-based signatures. The first one is called the hash and sign. Falcon is a concrete instantiation. And the other one, which we are going to uh, look at, is the uh, Fiat Shamir with boards paradigm. And Dirijam is a concrete instantiation among the finalists. On the other hand, uh, in recent years, uh, there's a renewed interest in multi-party signing protocols uh, in relation to, for example, up upcoming uh, new standardization uh, for the threshold signature or a uh, new application to blockchain and so on and so forth. So if you look at the literature, uh, there are many uh, existing works on round efficient and party signatures in the discrete log setting. So since Fiat Shamia with about style signature has a very similar structure uh, to Shinor uh, signing protocol, Shinor signing, of course here uh, the natural question is, can we construct a lattice based round efficient multi-party signing protocols uh, by making the most of the observations in the discrete log setting? So in our paper, uh, we address this question. So what is uh, N out of N signing? For simplicity, in this talk, I'm going to be focusing on uh, two out of N2 uh, case. So here, uh, there are two parties involved in uh, signing, and there's a single signing key uh, not known to uh, either of the parties, Alice and Paul. So this secret signing key is split to, into two shares. And then uh, first, uh, both parties agree on some message to be signed. Then after some interaction, they output some signature. So of course, the correctness uh, should guarantee that uh, with uh, the corresponding public key, the output message and the signature should be verified. So what about the security? Uh, there are a uh, few different ways to uh, define the security for two out of N, two signing. But uh, for example, we can uh, extend the existing uh, unforgeability gain in a straightforward fashion. So here we assume that uh, one of the parties is corrupted and then uh, the adversary obtains a share of the secret signing key. Then the adversary is able to query the honest party with some message to be signed. Then after some uh, signature queries, the adversary outputs a forgery uh, together with uh, some message. So the unforgeability requirement uh, should guarantee that, uh, should say that the output message and the signature uh, should not be verified uh, with the public key as long as the message has never been queried. So this is relatively simple. And this is uh, the security notion that we want to uh, satisfy when constructing the protocol. So now uh, what about the uh, Fiat Shamir with Abos paradigm? So here I'm briefly going over the uh, Dirigium identification protocol, which follows this kind of standard uh, three round identification protocol. So here uh, they are prover and signer. And as usual, prover first uh, generates some randomness uh, from some distribution, either Gaussian or uniform distribution over some small range, depending on the instantiation. And then the prover sends some commitment W. And after receiving challenge from the verifier, uh, the prover performs the so-called rejection sampling because uh, in the Fiat Shamir with Abos paradigm, uh, all of the secret key and the uh, uh, randomness Y and the challenge are uh, relatively small. So in order to uh, make the distribution of response Z independent of the secret signing key, you have to perform the rejection sampling. And then uh, after receiving the response Z, Z the verifier uh, checks uh, that the equation should hold. 
And then uh, the verifier should also check that the norm on the response Z is sufficiently small. So as I mentioned, uh, fiat shami is a boss paradigm. It's somewhat similar to Schnorr uh, identification protocol, at least syntactically. So you can uh, see some correspondence uh, by replacing uh, the public matrix uh, with base point and the randomness with uh, uh, uniformly generated uh, nouns from uh, integer module, uh, the group order. But of course, in the general, uh, identification, there's no uh, rejection sampling. So there's some uh, subtle difference here. So what about the security? Uh, at the high level, uh, soundness of the fiat shamiya with abort uh, identification protocol can be argued as follows. So we assume that uh, some cheating prover can correctly answer distinct challenge C and C prime. Then this equation uh, should hold uh, due to the verification condition. Then thanks to the LWE uh, assumption, uh, essentially we can argue that uh, the public key T uh, is indistinguishable from a uniformly chosen uh, value, a uniformly chosen uh, module element. Then uh, using uh, this cheating prover, we are actually able to uh, find the non-zero solution uh, to the cis problem with respect to the random matrix A concatenated uh, by the public uh, random public ET. So this way we can uh, reduce the soundness of the protocol to CIS and LW. And for the honest verifiers in Norwich, uh, usually uh, we are interested in the non-aborting case because uh, in a concrete application like a signature or non-interactive zero Norwich, uh, we don't have to uh, argue uh, security about the uh, rejected transcript. So here, uh, usually non-aborting uh, statistical honest verified zero knowledge simulator uh, first picks um, challenge and response C, and then later determine the, the W, the first message. And this is actually statistically uh, indistinguishable from the actual transcript. So now uh, let's uh, talk about the, the actual two-party uh, signing protocol. So uh, in this work, our results uh, can be essentially summarized as follows. So in the paper, we present two round multi-party fiat shamiyev's abort signing with full security proof in the classical random OCO model. And uh, we present two instantiations, N out of N uh, signatures and multi-signatures. In this talk, I'm uh, mainly talking about uh, N out of N signatures. Also uh, for simplicity, uh, I'm going to uh, uh, assume that the number of parties is two, but uh, the approach uh, mentioned in this talk uh, can be essentially generalized to uh, arbitrary number of parties uh, by uh, appropriately adjusting the parameters. And here's a comparison with the previous uh, solutions. So before our work, there have been a couple of uh, T out of N uh, lattice space threshold signatures following uh, either fiat shami of the boards or hash and sign. However, uh, they either require uh, FHE uh, or uh, generic multi-party computation in order to uh, carry out uh, uh, threshold signing operations. So, so of course, these uh, building blocks are somewhat uh, heavy, uh, even though uh, they allows uh, you to they allow you to uh, achieve T out of N uh, with no interactive uh, signing. So our approach is uh, uh, different from uh, these previous works. So in this work, uh, we only uh, achieve n out of n a case. However, uh, without requiring uh, expensive building blocks like FHG or MVC, uh, we can uh, achieve a low uh, protocol with low round complexity, either three round or two rounds. And the only uh, additional building block uh, is a homomorphic commitment or uh, trapdoor commitment. Also for the multi-signature, there have been, uh, again, a couple of uh, suggestions, but the, these protocols at least required uh, three rounds of interactions. In our work, uh, thanks to our technique, uh, we are able to reduce the round, round complexity to two rounds. So uh, let's look at the actual uh, construction. So our starting point is uh, this bare bone uh, two-party signing based on Schnorr. Uh, which is, so this bare bomb uh, protocol is very simple, but uh, actually not secure 
I'm going to explain why soon. So, so here's a simple approach. So in the first round, uh, both party uh, generate the commitments as usual, and then exchange the commitment. And then they take the sum of the commitments and hash the result uh, into the challenge. Then uh, both parties uh, generate the response share. And after exchanging the response, uh, they output the sum of the commit and response as a signature. So this is very simple. And we can actually port uh, all these uh, operations to the uh, lattice setting. So here's a two-party uh, division I'm signing. So now the public key is uh, random metrics uh, multiplied by the secret uh, signing key shares. And then uh, as usual, they generate the commitments. And the only additional operation is uh, again, rejection sampling. So here both parties uh, perform rejection sampling locally on their own shares. And then if the rejection sampling is successful, they output the response Z. Otherwise, uh, they restart the protocol. And this uh, protocol actually uh, satisfies the correctness. So why is this not secure? So there are essentially two issues. The first one is a simulation of rejected transcript W and C. So as I mentioned, like, this is usually not a problem uh, for a single user setting or no interactive zero knowledge. However, this uh, becomes uh, problematic in the interactive uh, setting because in the two party signing, we actually have to compute the uh, sum of the, the commitments W and W1 and W2. And this has to be done before you compute the challenge. So the approach inevitably requires both party to review uh, the value of W uh, before the rejection sampling. So of course, in the literature, uh, there's a standard trick uh, that uh, asks the prover to commit uh, to the first message W and then only reveal W uh, if the rejection sampling is successful. But in our uh, uh, application, this is actually not enough because again, you have to compute the sum of W before the challenge. So we, have, we somehow have to come up with a way to uh, circumvent this issue. The second approach, the second issue is uh, that essentially the malicious party can choose the first message depending on the uh, honest party's first input, first output. So somehow we have to uh, make sure that the malicious party uh, does not uh, depend their uh, message on the, the other party's output. So there's of course a naive approach to circumvent the issue. So if we introduce an extra round for essentially committing to the commitment, then uh, we can uh, indeed construct an honest party simulator. But of course this uh, requires additional uh, round of the interaction. And not only the proof doesn't go through, but also we can actually describe a potential concurrent attack, which can be seen as a variant of drivers at house uh, famous uh, concurrent attack against the Chino multi-signatures. So in order to circumvent uh, these two issues, uh, our solutions uh, can be summarized as follows. So instead of uh, sending just commitment, we employ a homomorphic commitment uh, in order to carry out the, the exchange of the commitment in the first round. And this way we can indeed hide the value of W uh, until the rejection sampling uh, uh, is successful. Uh, on the other hand, this also allows us to compute uh, the, the sum of the first message uh, thanks to the homomorphic property. For the second uh, issue, uh, we use a trap to homomorphic commitment in order to avoid an extra round. I'm going to explain uh, a bit later how we do this. For now, uh, let's uh, look at how we can circumvent the first issue. So here uh, we apply the homomorphic commitment to the first message W, and then uh, both parties exchange the commitment COM1 and COM2. And then thanks to the homomorphic property, we can indeed uh, take the sum of commitments in a meaningful way, and then derive a challenge. Then if the rejection sampling is successful, uh, they open uh, Z and uh, randomness for the commitment. Otherwise they reveal nothing. 
And uh, for the second issue, for now, we employed naive solution. So you just uh, send the hash of the commitments and then later check that the reviewed commitment COM1 and COM2 uh, is indeed a pre-image of the uh, hash which was previously, previously sent. So this construction is actually secure and the past the verification. The verification uh, works as follows. So first, uh, the verifier derives a challenge and then reconstruct uh, a committed W. Then what the verifier checks is that uh, as usual first, uh, they have to check that the norm of the response value is uh, sufficiently small. Also, they should check that uh, the commitment COM is a correct opening. Uh, commitment COM uh, actually contains the randomness R and the sum of the commitments, uh, sum of the first message W. And the correctness indeed holds uh, because of the linearity of the cis function and homomorphism of the uh, commitment. So what about the security? Um, so this is provably secure. So here's the uh, simulation sketch. So if protocol doesn't abort, honest party oracle uh, can be simulated with the usual non-aborting honest verified Zenoris simulator. If, pro if the protocol doesn't abort, then thanks to the hiding property of the commitment, the rejected uh, COM together with the challenge uh, reveal nothing about the, the rejected W. So this way we can uh, easily argue the the simulation of the honest party oracle. And then in our paper, uh, we present a security reduction uh, to LWE uh, without relying on the forking lemma. So this was made possible uh, by uh, you making use of the existing technique or the lossy identification. So what about the efficiency? So as mentioned, um, so this approach doesn't require any expensive uh, machine leave like FHE, MPC, or even uh, Gaussian sampling over lattices. Because uh, as an underlying protocol, uh, we employ Vyatashami with supports. So what we need is uh, just a local uh, Gaussian sampling over the integers. And then, um, but of course, this uh, somehow sacrifice, to some extent, uh, sacrifices uh, the scalability. So if we uh, if you think about uh, the general number of parties n, then because we uh, uh, take the sum of response, the Euclidean norm of the response value z grows by a factor of a square root number of parties. So this is why we have to somehow uh, adjust the parameters. And also another issue is that we have to wait for all uh, n parties to pass the rejection sampling uh, simultaneously. So of course, the, if the number of parties is large, the, the probability that the protocol succeeds is uh, exponentially small. So this is why uh, in order to uh, make the protocol uh, uh, practical, we have to uh, either adjust the value of the standard deviation uh, depending on the number of parties, or uh, you have to uh, execute a sufficient number of uh, protocol executions, uh, protocol instances so that uh, at least uh, one of the protocol instances, uh, in the protocol instances, uh, we can hope that all parties simultaneously uh, pass the rejection sampling. So how do we achieve two round protocol? So as mentioned earlier, this first round, uh, the committing to the commitment looks a bit redundant. So what if we just remove this round? So the protocol looks much simpler. First, uh, both parties generate a commitment and exchange commitments. However, uh, if you try to uh, give a security reduction, uh, we actually face some issues. So in the standard uh, security uh, reduction for the Fiat Shamir uh, type signatures, you actually have to uh, simulate uh, the honest party uh, signing oracle. So, for the honest party signing oracle simulation, uh, you first generate a response Z and the challenge, and then determine the, the first message W. And then accordingly, you have to program the random oracle such that, uh, that this corresponding output uh, becomes indeed previously chosen uh, challenge C. 
So this is not the issue for a single user scheme, but for uh, end party scheme, you actually uh, fail uh, to program the random walk uh, if the honest party first uh, sends out a commitment. So in this case, after you send out commitment, the simulator doesn't know uh, what uh, commitment the adversary will send. So the simulation, sorry, the program of the programming on the random oracle requires uh, some contribution from the adversary. So the simulation actually doesn't work here. Also, uh, so it's not just about the uh, uh, probable security uh, issue. So you actually, you're actually able to describe uh, some potential concurrent attack uh, as a variant of drivers at trials attack against the Shino signatures. So in order to circumvent this, uh, we essentially uh, borrow the idea uh, that the, you, you hash the, the message to be signed into the commitment key. Anyway, so in order to circumvent uh, this issue of the simulation, so uh, we uh, make use of the, the so-called straight line simulation uh, with trapdoor commitment. So with trapdoor commitment uh, scheme, uh, the commitment key generation additionally outputs an extra trapdoor uh, TD. And given this uh, trapdoor, uh, the commitment uh, can be open to any message. So we exploit this uh, useful feature. So here's how the simulation goes. So the simulator uh, now sends out some uh, fake commitment uh, with a, uh, which is not associated with any message yet. And then this fake commitment can be later equivocated to anything, uh, depending on the derived joint challenge. So more concretely, uh, the simulation goes like this. So here, the simulator, of course, doesn't have any uh, secret signing key, but it has some uh, trapdoor. Then during the first round, uh, the simulator just sends a fake commitment combo. Then uh, you just um, generate the challenge uh, after receiving the adversary's shares of uh, commitment two. Then uh, you can invoke uh, the honest verified general simulator for the underlying protocol. And then once you determine the, the pre-image of the commitment, you can equivocate the commitment uh, uh, to this simulated uh, message W. So this is how the simulation works. Also, um, you have to uh, take care of the hashing uh, to the commitment key. So as I said, uh, we actually have to uh, generate a commitment key for each message to be signed. So uh, this requires additional uh, uh, random oracle simulation. So for the simulation to work, uh, basically for each message to be signed, you invoke trapdoor commitment key generation and then program the random oracle uh, such that uh, the output uh, commitment key is associated with a message uh, to be signed. So this completes the proof essentially. So uh, let's look at the uh, final form of our two-round protocol. So uh, in this protocol, uh, commitment key is first generated, uh, depending on the message. And then both parties uh, exchange the commitment, COM1, COM2. And then uh, they perform rejection sampling. Uh, if that's successful, they open the commitment and uh, send the response. Otherwise, they restart. This concludes the, uh, the protocol. So uh, a bit more about the security. Actually, uh, the inevitably, the trapdoor commitment scheme requires uh, computationally uh, binding. So this seems to require some kind of rewinding technique. Actually, uh, in our security proof, uh, we had to rely on the forking lemma. Uh, which leads to a larger security, lo security loss than the lossy uh, uh, identification technique. Also, although uh, I didn't have time to uh, talk about the trapdoor commitment scheme uh, and the concrete instantiation, uh, in our paper, uh, we have some uh, concrete instantiation uh, based on solely based on lattice-based uh, assumptions. So to conclude, uh, in this work, uh, we introduced multi-party Fiat Shamir visa board signing with low round complexity 
yet without uh, heavy primitives like FHE or generic multi-body computation. I didn't talk about the multi-signatures, but essentially uh, you can easily extend this technique to the multi-signatures uh, by deriving uh, the challenge for each, uh, for each uh, signer. And uh, thanks to this uh, uh, replacement, uh, we can actually, uh, we actually don't have to require a dedicated uh, interactive key generation protocol. And then the, the construction can be proven secure in the plain public key model. And uh, we still have a couple of open questions. For example, uh, this approach inevitably uh, increases the, the normal bound for the output signature. So uh, of course, the interesting question is uh, whether we can uh, make the <coughs> signature size less dependent on the number of parties. And also our two round uh, protocols uh, had to rely on the forking number uh, for the sake of security. So can we uh, even give a, a tighter security reduction as well as a security proof in the quantum random oracle model? Uh, these are very interesting uh, follow-up questions. So that's it from me. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer.